Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this amazing world. My name is Donovan Jolly, and welcome everybody once again for another amazing video of DIY investing. The last week of crypto has been one of the most insane times that I have ever experienced, and it's probably the most crazy and volatile time that I've ever been a part of. This completely beats what it was like in 2016 and 2017, and even in my opinion beats what we saw in COVID in a lot of ways. Today, we're gonna be breaking down the price action, what it means moving forward from here, the bullish and bearish perspective, and then I'm also gonna be talking about decent centralized exchanges, the tokens that are traded under them, and how we can go about making a ton of money off of this narrative moving forward into this next bull run. If you're new and just find this channel, always remember to do me a favor by leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos like the one provided for you here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and with that being said, let's jump right into this amazing video today. Alrighty guys, first things first. In my last video, I talked about the bearish perspective, what it means moving forward, if we continue to see downside price action, if we continue to close below our resistances, then obviously speaking, we would expect to see that the market would trend lower. And so with the collapse of FTX, we talked about if there was potentially other cryptos, other exchanges, other funds that had lost a lot of their money inside of that collapse. And so we were wondering what the actual fallout was going to be. Now, all of this is at the end of the day, just rumors, it's FUD until proven correct, or until it's just proven as FUD. We don't know until we have to move forward. And so one of the things I wanted to point out to you guys is obviously the bullish perspective, because in my opinion, this is something I don't see enough people talking about, but it looks so much and reminds me so much of what we saw in our last bear market when it came to the total altcoin market market cap. Now, this is going to be um, the total altcoin market cap from our last bear market, and this is going to be what we see today. Now, up here in the top right corner, this is actually a Wyckoff uh, accumulation, and this is a bottom formation that actually happens. And what's known as kind of a Wyckoff spring, where we get through this kind of accumulation, where this is the end of a downtrend, we rally into a resistance, we come back down, make a lower low just barely below our prior one, rally back up into resistance, and then we make one more third and final kind of sweep of the lows here, even going lower than the last two. And then that's kind of what creates our last flush in order for the next bull run to start. And if you guys can see down here in our last bull market, or I should say the last bear market, this was our perfect example of exactly that, where we go through almost the exact same accumulation, where we come make the bottom, rally up into resistance, same thing happened here, into here, come back down onto support, here, rally back into resistance, here, and then we make one more flush at the lows, and this one pretty much stopped right at those lows. We didn't manage to go any lower than that. And so what's interesting here about the crypto total market cap, this is the altcoins, remember, that inside of our last move, we never actually made a lower low. We actually made a higher high as of now. Keep in mind, we still have to wait. There's still plenty of time to go until we can truly confirm whether or not the low is going to be in. But as far as this sell-off, Basically, what we had over the last couple weeks was the third biggest exchange in crypto going bankrupt, tons of people losing money, exchanges uh, losing money, people losing money, and most importantly, cryptos losing money and going bankrupt with their treasuries. And then all of a sudden, FTX gets actually hacked over the last couple days, and nobody hears from Sam. He comes on and posts on his Twitter, have fun staying poor. And so it's actually insane to think what's happening. And if you guys haven't seen that tweet, I'm going to pull it up right now. Wow, so now that I'm going back over the tweet, I realize that it's actually removed. I should have took a screenshot because it was so crazy. And then the second one was an H, but then he, the third tweet was literally, have fun staying poor. So H, F, S, P. The last one, the three, was F, S, P. So he literally said what? Number two is H, and then it was FSP, have fun staying poor. This was all happening after FTX exchange was hacked the day before. And so I don't know if this is him just being arrogant over the fact, or if he's trying to pretend that he's hacked, or if he's trying to pretend, you know, he's kidnapped. I don't know what's going on, but this is truly the most crazy thing that could have possibly happened in crypto. And it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. This bear market has by far been the craziest one. And so I come back to this, and I'm mentioning this 
right after you know we failed to break below this low on the total altcoin market cap and i'm wondering myself is this the same exact bottom formation that's going to happen in the same way that we saw it happen in our last bear market where everybody gets faked out remember guys this was the covid bottom when we had covid and everything capitulated that was this low right here so for the entire market to be going bankrupt in this bear market and that leading us to this low and then for us to be having this secondary capitulation after the news of FTX being insolvent and uh, other cryptos being insolvent because of FTX going bankrupt, it makes me wonder if because we couldn't even break this low, are we actually going to? You know, sentiment has definitely shifted. We've seen a lot of people bearish all of a sudden. I mean, I obviously made a video in my last one that was talking about the potential that we could go lower. And that was all based around the fact that we had just closed below our previous resistance. And we've actually continued to close below and sell off ever since I made that update. And so as it stands now, the PA is bearish. If you're looking at this just from horizontal support and resistance standpoint, then you're just going to be able to look at this as the same thing as bearish all the way through. But if we're looking at this as a Wyckoff accumulation, and we're looking at this in terms of our last bear market, you know, at the bottom of our COVID low, everybody thought this was bearish as well. Everybody was saying that it was going to crash. Everybody was drawing Ethereum going all the way back down to $8 and $6 and stuff like that. And so that was the way everybody was drawing everything then. Now, I understand that everybody's kind of drawing things to go to 12K to 11K, maybe even 10K per Bitcoin. And so we're going to watch and see. But keep in mind that we're getting all of these huge targets. And the altcoin total market cap never even broke support. Yes, when we're looking at things in terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin looks even more bearish than the rest of the market. But that's why I like to pull up these altcoin total market cap charts is because the total market cap charts oftentimes hold better support, show better psychological resistance and support levels. And it's much better to actually analyze those charts when actually coming to uh, a form of agreement inside your trading plan. And so when I look at this market, it looks almost the same. It's just maybe slightly less volatile. But if you're looking at this, I mean, when we're analyzing this, how isn't this the same accumulation? We go through, you know, a little sideways action here. We break out, do this little flip. Same thing happens there. Run up into a top, rally back down, retest this little range box, break above bull trap, and then fall below that. Same thing happens here. It leads us into our spring, another bull trap, leads to a fake out. The same thing happened here. We closed below our last support and everything looked pretty bearish. And so as far as it stands now, I can see the bullish perspective. And that's why it's obviously important to connect and actually analyze both scenarios. Because if we do get a capitulation, obviously it's smart to have money on the sides to be able to accumulate it. But if we're looking at this in terms of this could potentially be our bottom, then what we're looking at is us sitting at the range lows, you know, where it stands for me, we've rejected off of our previous support level. So that's a very obvious rejection. We've fallen back down to pretty much the support level of our June support. Even though we came back down at our bottom of capitulation, we closed pretty much at this range. And this was the range that we were in right after our capitulation in the summer. Now, we're back within that same exact sort of range. In fact, we've closed below even our last support level. So our last support is literally where we're at right now. And I'm going to make this green so everybody can kind of identify that. If we continue to close below this, then obviously the market's going to go for one more low. And so that's what we're going to expect. If we're looking at things just from a basic standpoint, analyzing things from PA, then as long as we're holding support above this, then we could expect to see another attempt at breaking up into our prior support. If we can get a move back above 511 billion and we run back up into this previous range, and we start kind of consolidating in here, then that's at least going to set us up for the potential of reversal. If we flip back above our previous support, the high that we couldn't get back above just most recently on the 11th of November, then that's going to set us in for a move and a big run up to Bitcoin back at 20K, 21K and levels like that. And so if we're looking at these from that standpoint, that's what we need to see. Really, we're on our last leg when it comes to support here. Yes, we could come back down and come and retest the very range low. But if we start leaking back down to that range low, I'm going to expect that that's more weakness than anything. And that shows two exhaustion attempts by the bulls. We got rejected by this previous support is resistance. And so if we fall through this one down here at $460 billion in market cap, then I'm really not expecting anything of our prior June low to hold. That was just a 
capitulation event. That's a little wick. Those really don't provide a whole lot of support or resistance. And so I'm not expecting a lot. If we lose the support pretty much where we're at, I'm expecting a bigger drop where Bitcoin really would go to like 10 to 12K. 12K is the next support if we fall. And that's just looking at things from a basic uh, horizontal support and resistance standpoint. And so that's what I'm seeing there. Now guys, let's move into the tokens on the decentralized exchanges. With all of this collapse of FTX, we have created a huge opportunity for decentralized exchanges. All of this new opportunity, leaving because of fear of uh, centralized exchanges potentially being insolvent, potentially uh, liquidating and losing all of their money and them not knowing or having any sort of way of getting it back. So with that being said, let's talk about my favorite ones on today's list. Now, first one on today's list is going to be GMX. GMX is one that I started accumulating because I truly feel like this is going to be one of the cryptos that ends up having one of those big adoption cycles. Every single cycle, there's always a new set of cryptos that come on stage. Yes, some of the old cryptos from the last cycle always end up doing good as well. But when we're looking at things from an ROI perspective, what's going to give us the best return? The ones that haven't had a cycle are always the ones that give the best return. And so what I say for anybody looking to what to accumulate right now, whether we get a lower low or not, now is a good opportunity regardless. And what I'm looking at is decentralized exchanges and different opportunities that people can use to get their money off of basically centralized exchanges, bridges, anything like that. And what we see with GMX, GMX is a decentralized exchange on Arbitrum. Arbitrum is something that doesn't have a token. We could potentially see an airdrop, which is why I think it's good for everybody that's hearing this video to go out, mess with the Arbitrum bridge, go swap some ether around on it, just play around. Um, I do have a screen shot saved on my phone that is a little bit of a guide to teach you guys how to actually go mess around with Arbitrum. And so I will get that out at a later time. But for this video, the reason why I like GMX is because it's a decentralized exchange built on Arbitrum. I believe Arbitrum is going to see a lot of adoption because already we're seeing a significant amount of Ether transactions. Over half of Ether transactions are being done through Arbitrum. And so that's obviously a big sign that there's going to be a big cycle moving forward. And so anybody that's watching this, I highly recommend this token uh, that is one that could potentially play really big on the whole FTX collapse because that's exactly Exactly what we saw. We rallied all the way back up to our previous resistance, or I should say previous support. It was resistance. We flipped it back as support, and now we're rallying all the way back up and clearing some of our prior resistance levels clear up at $45. And so we could still see a pullback here, and who knows, maybe we get a really obvious inverse head and shoulder formation. I don't know. The more obvious it is, the less likely it is to play out, in my opinion, and that's just the way it seems to me. Um, but keep in mind, guys, that that's not really important. What's important and what I'm looking at is the fact that this is in a really early cycle, and that's what really got me excited when I first started buying this. What we're looking at right here is the very first beginning impulses of an Elliott Wave cycle. This entire first cycle that we saw from October of 2021 to June of 2022 was our first wave as far as our impulses. Now, most recently, this run-up that we've had here was our next beginning one wave, but this is wave one of three. And that's why we see it get so much more parabolic. And we kind of see this big correction. I'm not trying to draw the correction perfect because I'm not some master Elliotitian, but what's important to understand is the fact that what we're getting is stacking one waves. This is wave one of one, and this most recent impulse that we saw here is wave one of three. So notice this big impulse here, that's wave one of three. And inside every impulse, you're gonna see three impulse waves. So this was our first one. Wave one. What we're getting ready for next is wave three of three. This one's gonna get really impulsive, and that's why I believe that it's a really good time to be getting into these, because if you're trying to be early, now is the last opportunity for being early, because this thing really looks like it's about to skyrocket in value. And then after that, we'll have a four wave correction, and then we still have a wave five before this impulse is even done. And then that's only gonna be a wave three and a wave four. We'll still have a whole nother wave five to go after that. And so it's hard to say what price we're gonna go to. I'm not trying to predict price because when it comes to impulsing markets in crypto, they go way higher than any Fibonacci target you can draw a lot of times. And so what we're doing right now is basically taking a fundamental bet on this crypto being able to garnish a lot of adoption. 
and being able to perform well long term. It's one of those where we're trying to play the cycles. We're not trying to get to some exact price target. We're simply just trying to average in while it's low, while it's cheap, and then when this thing just starts exploding, just average out. We don't know how to predict the exact price, so just do your part by averaging out, keeping money always in there for however long the bull cycle is gonna go. You know, if this thing runs multiple years like we've seen in prior cycles, then obviously you're gonna wanna be able to hold at least some of that long term. Just keep that in mind, guys. What we're seeing is the really early stages of impulses. And I love seeing markets like this because if we throw up the volume, we're also getting a significant amount of buy volume that's coming in, especially after our most recent dip. There was a lot of people that were waiting to get in on this dip. They got in on that dip, and now we're ready to go up into a much deeper impulse. So pay attention to this. Now, the next one on today's list is going to be DYDX. Now, I did go mess around on the exchange itself, and I'll be honest, it kind of was kind of clunky, and it was a little bit confusing, and it didn't really work that well, so <laughs> we'll see what happens, but there is a ton of new volume that's coming in. Obviously, there's a lot of volume coming in because of the fact FTX imploded. There's a lot of people that are looking for new opportunities inside of the market. Where can I put my money? Where is it going to be safe? Where am I not going to have to worry about it potentially getting liquidated because of uh, greedy people that run the uh, exchanges itself? And that is ultimately going to be on a ex uh, decentralized exchange. I believe this next cycle, one of the key narratives, one of the big adoption things that we're going to see a lot of people make money on, myself included, people that are watching this video that end up getting into any of these tokens, what we're going to see is a lot of exchange tokens, decentralized exchange tokens, do a big cycle. I believe that that's a narrative to pay attention for because it's not one we've seen play out so far. We really haven't seen too many decentralized exchanges have monumental bull cycles. There's maybe been a handful that had big or at least, you know, if you got in early, you would have made a decent amount of money. But when we're talking about a massive adoption cycle, there really isn't a massive one that we use aside from Uniswap. And Uniswap is great, don't get me wrong. But what we're talking about is a true decentralized exchange where you can actually do perpetual swaps, any type of futures, any sort of thing like where it covers all basis, just spot markets. Think about being able to trade on KuCoin, Binance, you know, Coinbase, Kraken, any of these exchanges, but think about being able to do it on a decentralized exchange. All of those great things that they offer on those, imagine being able to do all of it on a DEX. That's what we're talking about here. And so when it comes to decentralized exchanges, DYDX is one of those along with GMX that I'm watching. And what we're already seeing is the early stages of a breakout. Now, the big thing I want you guys to pay attention for here is if we can clear above this previous high, and we're already seeing the breakout volume that looks like it's gonna continue in that direction. If we get above this high, then that's just a confirmed double bottom breakout. Now, prior double bottom formations that we've seen um, have always been my favorites in any sort of way. If we go back to Bitcoin, in the 2015 bottom, it was the exact same sort of emotions that played out. And that's why I think that it's important to consider this pattern and why the bottom could still be in. Because if the bottom's in here and people are already panic selling, then you're literally gonna miss out on a huge opportunity to have gotten in down here at these range lows. And the reason I say that is because I've seen this pattern play out and it was the pattern that played out right when I first got into crypto. And if we're looking at this, um, from a support and resistance standpoint, it is a little bit different. Ours was a little bit more volatile, which is why I pulled up the altcoin total market cap. It followed it a little bit more identically. But what we saw here was the same thing. And if we actually pulled up the Bitfinex chart, let's pull that one up because it's going to show it a little bit better. Bitfinex got hacked. And that's what created this secondary liquidation event. And so that's why I like to show this with you guys because notice how it made a lower low here technically made a lower low. And that's because Bitfinex got hacked. And that's what created this big liquidation event. And so if what we're seeing is pretty much the same thing that played out with FTX exchange, it got hacked and it lost everybody's money, unfortunately. If we're seeing that exact same thing playing out, then it's at least something to consider when we're analyzing the pattern. Because if the bulls are still in control here and we're gonna see a reversal out of this, then it's gonna play out in a similar fashion as what we've seen play out in prior cycles. This is the same thing that played out here in the bottom that we saw all the way back up in 2015. It was the same bottom that we saw in our 2018 to 2019 bear market. And it could be the potential same bottom that's playing out now. Now I know a lot of people are gonna throw out the argument, 
well, if everybody sees this same pattern, then it's not likely to play out again. And I agree with you 100%, which is why it's so interesting to me that not a lot of people are talking about this. I mean, it's obvious that we're seeing the same pattern playing out, at least being repeated in the same fashion. Whether it repeats itself again is yet to be decided. But if we get a bounce in here, and we bought them in a similar fashion of what we've seen play out in prior cycles, then a lot of people are gonna miss out on buying the range lows. And so I talk about this simply because of the reason that's how you basically judge this reversal pattern. Once we break out of the previous high here, then that confirms the entire reversal of the bear trend. And so we're seeing a lot of these early cycles starting to play out with different sort of cryptos. Some of these tokens, being GMX, and we're seeing them already looking like they're bottomed, right? GMX is breaking out of this capitulation that we just saw. If the whole market just had the third biggest exchange go under, and we really haven't seen too much fallout since then, are we going to see a whole lot more fallout from that point? And that's just kind of what I'm considering. You know, I would have expected that if there were big cryptos that in other institutions that had a lot of their money on FTX when it went under, I would have expected that they would have already come out and kind of said, right? Because if their treasuries were liquidated in that event, you know, we'd probably end up hearing about that. And so far we haven't. So, I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen. But the way that a lot of these different cryptos have reacted out of this capitulation event they've looked really bullish. And with DYDX now potentially breaking out of a double bottom, we might see the very early stages of our bull run playing out. And these uh, decentralized exchanges are actually showing the most strength. So if that's the case, you know, something to consider. These are some of my picks that I'm watching. Uh, we have to see these kind of pop back into support. SushiSwap being the last one on the list. We are below the 50-day MA. But like I stated, guys, if this is a true bottom like we're seeing across the board, and I'm trying to point out right here, if this bottoms in a similar fashion of what we've seen in prior bear markets, then these are all going to bottom at the end of the day. If Bitcoin bottoms and starts going up, sushi swaps going to bottom and start going up. That's just the way that the markets work. And so we have seen a massive crash in altcoins. They've corrected the same sort of percentage return as what we've seen in prior bear markets, 90% plus. Bitcoin has now corrected not even 80%, but about 77%. And so if we continue to close lower, then we're looking at about, you know, typical bear market correction, nothing too crazy. But if this ends up being another one of these Wyckoff type events, a lot of people are going to miss out on buying the bottom. And what I find so interesting as we wrap up this video, I know I've rambled on a lot, but I just think it's really cool. Hex was the first crypto to do this pattern. And Hex is literally creating this exact fractal. And it was the first one to do this. Now, guys, I'm just stating this. Everybody hates Hex for some freaking reason. I don't have any sort of judgment towards any crypto. I'm willing to buy whatever looks the best and presents the best opportunity in my portfolio. The reason why I like Hex is it has a lot to do with the fact um, it itself is going to provide a lot of opportunity when the release of Pulse Chain comes out because everybody that holds Hex is going to get a duplicated version on the Pulse Chain network. And what we saw when the Ethereum 2.0 network went live, the duplicated version of Hex went up 10x. And so if that version is going up 10x, imagine what it could potentially do on the Pulse Chain network, the one that Richard Hart created himself. Now guys, I'm not some Richard Hart fanboy. I think he's obnoxious, whatever, all those dumb things. I think he's going to make me a lot of money. And that's all that matters to me at the end of the day. And the reason I'm even bringing up this pattern is because it was the first one to do this capitulation. When the whole market was up here and Bitcoin still hadn't capitulated, we still hadn't seen the collapse of FTX, this is what happened to uh, the price of HEX. It actually sold off in this sort of a move. So it was the first one to start creating that exact fractal. And after that point, it's actually held support very well. And we've kind of created the same sort of formation where is if we continue to hold support and trend sideways, then this thing could probably actually lead the market on the way up. Now, Hex has always done that. If you've been somebody that pay te pays attention to charts, you'll know that Hex has actually led the market and began impulses pretty much since the beginning of its inception. And that's why I was so irritated why when I first got into crypto, or I shouldn't even say when I first got into crypto, when Hex was first launched, I didn't have any money because I was poor and living in my grandma's basement. And so I didn't have anything to throw into it. I really wanted to. And Hex ended up being one of the very best returning assets over that bull run. And while I'm not really betting on the fact that Hex is going to be one of the very best returning assets over the next bull run because it has such a high market cap, I believe Pulse Chain will. And with it already creating this exact fractal, it's important to understand that it led the market on this fractal. It's held support. If we continue to hold support trending sideways, 
if you guys hold hex, you're gonna get a duplicated version onto the Pulse Chain network. And so when this goes live, I believe that it's a good opportunity to at least make some money. And there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna throw shade in the comments. These are gonna be people that miss out. I'm telling you guys, this is an opportunity that I'm at least putting money in. This isn't some sponsored sponsored video or anything like that. And this isn't even a decentralized uh, exchange token. The reason I bring this up is has everything to do with this pattern. You know, I thought it was interesting that Hex created this pattern first before the whole market did it. And so if the total market cap holds support here and we create the same exact bottom formation that I've seen played out in many of our last bear markets, then all I'm saying is these things are gonna run and they're gonna do great returns. And so watch out for them. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found value in this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos. If you guys wanna join the Discord server, download my free ebook. Links are in the description for that. Now guys, if you guys wanna follow all the trades that I take over this cycle, anything that I'm doing inside of my portfolio, all of my investments with NFTs, different things like that, all of it's going to get taught to you guys inside of my Discord server. So if you ultimately want to get access to that, links are in the description to go ahead and sign up on my website. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.